And the winner of the Maple Leaf for the most Canadian host is Julie Stewart Binks! Wow, a Maple Leaf! This is a dream come true. You know what? I was just a little hoser up in the great white north. I'll say, oh, a, a meter high. I said that one day I'd want to do two things. Check a chirpy American through the glass in the Olympics, those damn yanks, and win a Maple Leaf for most Canadian host. And here we are. Boy, my hockey coach is going to be so, so proud of me. I'm inspired by all of my fellow nominees, and I just want to say I'm really sorry for Julie. 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 What? Can you pass the syrup? You know, you fell asleep the first time I asked you that. You should probably get that checked out. Your drinking problem, too. show that thinks the college football national championship should be on a Saturday. No brainer. All right, I'm your host, Julie Stewart Banks, and today I'm thrilled to be joined by UFC fighter Caitlin Chukagian, who is preparing for her flyweight title bout against Valentina Shevchenko on February 8th. Blonde fighter, as she's known on social media, owns a career record of 13-2-0 with two knockouts and a submission. Caitlin was a two-division champion in Cage Fury Fighting Championship, and now she's three weeks out from her first UFC title shot. Caitlin, thank you so much for being with us here on the show again. We know you're super busy. You actually had a day off today, yes. but how is prep going for the, the big fight? Um, it's going really well, uh, just kind of, I'm in the same routine, I do the same thing every fight camp, it's kind of like, you know, by now I'm just so used to it, and I just go through the motions, do it all, but, uh, but yeah, today's my day off, so I'm enjoying it. Getting to do, like, yeah. normal things and not get punched in the face for a day is nice. Well, you don't know yet, because, yes. you know, I play <laughs> hockey, so I'm gonna uh, test out my, yeah. my fighting against you, which should not go very well for me. Uh, we're gonna chat more about Caitlin's career wanting to be a cheerleader when she was younger and play a game of fight, marry, kill. But first, let's dive into tonight's headlines. The Red Sox parted ways with manager and former Astros bench coach Alex Cora in the wake of the sign-stealing scandal. Cora says he regrets the situation but looks forward to his new gig as an advance scout for the Patriots. <laughs> you're not cheating, you're not trying, right? You just can't get caught. That's right. Everyone's cheating. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the players of the WNBA have a new collective bargaining agreement that raises their salaries. From now on, women who play professional basketball will earn just as much as men who play in college. <laughs> But you know what? It's like great that they are subsidizing women for going through maternity leave, which is finally people recognize that women do absolutely everything. <laughs> Speaking of women, as a way of including them, the NHL announced that they will have a women's three-on-three -three game during All-Star Weekend, further proof that women can get the same job done with half the resources. <laughs> yes, we've got a big female empowerment show here today, obviously, with Caitlin here. Uh, you know, you became a pro in 2015. Mm -hmm. You've been in, you know, sports is very male dominated, but especially UFC. Like, how have you seen things sort of change in the favor of female fighters? Yeah, I think I'm pretty lucky being a female athlete that does MMA. I mean, it's pretty equal for women and men. I mean, the pay is pretty equal. It just kind of depends if you have a following if people watch your fights and if you win then that's kind of how your pay increases so um i can't really relate to other female athletes fortunately that you know deal with that but um but yeah i mean it's been growing so much when i started mma there was only there wasn't even women in the U women in the UFC, and then there was one weight division, and now there's three weight, uh, actually four weight divisions. Mm -hmm. So it's super popular. They're each division's dense, and you know we're getting paid, so we're happy. Yeah, and like even just beyond the octagon, in terms of other opportunities, you guys are, you know, just like really big celebrities sort of at this point too. Probably because individual sport as well. Yeah, I think 
being uh, MMA, being an individual sport, you can kind of show your personality a little mm -hmm. bit more. It's not, you know, and not to mention we're not like covered in, in yeah. gear and everything. You can see our faces and, you know, you can hear us talk and everything. So, yeah, it, it's a good sport to be in. Yeah, because even the NHL, speaking of covering faces, like, no one cares about hockey in America. Uh, that's another topic. Uh, a Knicks fan won $1,000 worth of lottery scratchers after hitting a half-court shot from which he only got to keep $570. Another classic Knicks investment getting only half of what you expect. It's actually more money than you would expect. You'd expect zero as like a Knicks fan. It's like they suck, so. Former NFL wide receiver Chad Johnson is trying out for the XFL as a kicker. He joins a long list of former NFL players trying out for the XFL, but the most likely to succeed is still Troy Palomalo as a cheerleader's pom-pom. That hair, man, <laughs> like, I would pay for that hair to put on my head because I paid someone else. Anyways, okay, we're not going to talk about hair extensions today. <laughs> A video from after the LSU National Championship win shows Odell Beckham Jr. handing out real money to players. When asked what the players did with it, he said a majority donated it to charity, a trumpet playing stripper on Bourbon Street. <laughs> uh, but the wild part is that these players, you know, are getting in trouble for taking some of this money. Some of them not stu call it student athletes anymore, by the way, but that coaches like Coach O and Dabble Swinney are getting a million dollar bonus together. It's just like inequality that only women can understand. All right, that's it for tonight's headlines and print it. We've got an awesome show for you folks today. We're gonna take our first time out on the program, but when we return, we'll find out what it's like to crush skulls next. Hi, I'm Chris Stefano, and I had to call it a night. Because Julie got me drunk and molested me. <laughs> <laughs> now, welcome back, kiddies, to Call It A Night. I'm JSP, and we've got UFC fighter Kaylin Chukagian getting ready for her flyaway title bout against Valentina Shevchenko, UFC 247, February 8th. Uh, Kaitlyn, when you, we were talking before, when you found out that you know you're going to be fighting in this in this title bout. What are sort of like two or three things that would surprise us about like getting ready just to enter that octagon? Um, you know, like for ones when I got this title fight compared to other fights, you know, they there's more like media involved with it. They want to do the countdown show and they want to come to your house. Well, like when they come to our house it's like eight weeks out. I'm like, I'm not really in full training camp. I'm like, right. can you come back like three weeks out when I'm in better shape? You know, yeah. they're like doing videos of me. And then like, you know, we had all our Christmas decorations in the house and they had to <laughs> like position us other ways. Cause they're, you know, when they play it uh, the right, first yeah. week of February, they don't want to see all the Christmas decorations. <laughs> so just a couple of the media stuff is a little bit different, but, um, but as far as training, like, you know, I'm pretty much like an OCD of my training schedule. I do everything the same. So if mm -hmm. I'm feeling like, kind of tired on a certain day. I'm not like, wait, am I, what's wrong? Am I not in shape? I know like, all right, by this session and this time during the week, I'm usually a little bit tired. So other than like a few of the media stuff, everything's pretty much the same. Yeah, you said it's kind of like, almost like plug and play. Like, you know what you have to do. Everything is very regimented. How do you get yourself up on days when you're like, I'm just, I feel completely beat down? Yeah, it, it, it's tough. You know, there's some days where I'm like, I can't even walk, like, I'm getting out of bed. I'm like, I can't even walk. How am I going to go to the gym and just spar a bunch of guys? Yeah. You know, but uh, this camp was funny because uh, Valentina Shevchenko, my opponent, she's uh, been training in Thailand. So I follow her on Instagram. I have oh. for years. So, um, like, with the time difference, when I wake up early in the morning, she posts, like, every day, and I see all her training posts. So I'm like, oh, she trained. It's like, you know, it's like 6 in the morning, and I see she trained. So I'm like, oh. Okay, all right, I gotta train. I feel like she beat me to it, even though it's just the right, time difference. Yeah. She's in Thailand, but uh, but yeah, that's been a little extra motivating. That's awesome. I didn't even really think about, like, you can use Instagram and social media to say, oh my gosh, this is what she's working on right now, or like, this is what's going on. Do you take, like, any kind of insight and knowledge from that to what you're working on? 
Um, I, I, I try not to, because I know for me personally, like, I don't post, like, all my good stuff yeah, on, yeah. you know? Like, I'll post, like, some flashy stuff that looks cool, but, like, I won't post all of my stuff. Um, I also don't post, like, all my training sessions. Yeah. So someone might think, like, oh, she just went for a run today, but really, I went for a run. I did sparring, yeah, I did jiu-jitsu, you know? So, but, um, but yeah, like, I, that's how it is now. You follow all the fighters, and then all of a sudden you're fighting them, and you're like, wait, should I not look at their stuff? Right. Should I not, you know? And I'm like... Now I'm like, all right, she's got, like, millions of followers or she's not going to notice if I do. I'm like, mm, I'm looking you at her stuff. Yeah, I know, because, like, it's like if you have an ex or someone, I'm like, I'm going to post this photo because I know you're going to see yeah. it. Yeah. Do you ever do that being like, I know she's going to see this? Um, sometimes you kind of want it, or you more like I don't post stuff that mm. I don't want them to see. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's, she's silent right now. Like, yeah. something's going on yeah. I don't know about. That's so fascinating. I hadn't thought about that angle. Um we, you know, for, for flyweight, you have to be 125 pounds. And we're, you know, we were being told that the cutting weight to get to that point is so challenging. Like, how do you, how do you do that? Yeah, that's definitely, cutting weight is the worst part of fighting. Like, actually, you weigh in the day before, so it's almost like a relief. You weigh in, and you get that over with, and you're like, oh, okay, hard parts are now all I have to do is fight. Right. You know, people just think, how do you get in there and fight? It's like, that's not hard. It's it's the cutting weight that's okay. hard because it's just like physically draining. It's just, it, it never gets easier too. You know, you can get smarter with it, but it, you know, whether you have to cut two pounds or 12 pounds, it's, it sucks. And so like, how come you don't just like try to stay, like how come there's always that up and down of cutting and then building back up and like this fluctuation? Yeah, I mean, it would make sense to just fight out what you walk around at so you don't yeah. have to, but it's kind of like no one does that, so if you do that, you're at a disadvantage. So, I mean, some other organizations are trying to implement, like, different weight-cutting um, techniques where they test your hydration level so you can't be dehydrated right. when you weigh in, <clears throat> and that's some that's one way to kind of fix the problem. But We'll talk, we'll talk more about it later because, like, I just, you know, it's like New Year's and, like, would love to figure out how to cut weight like fast. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, but you, when you were younger, your your parent, you want to be a cheerleader, mm -hmm. um, but your parents were like, no, we don't want you cheering. We want you like playing sports. How do they? How do they feel about you being like a UFC fighter now? Yeah, they they love it. I mean, I remember when my brother would play midget football. I was like, I want to do cheerleading and stuff. And my mom was always like. You can do any sport you want, it doesn't matter, but you have to do a sport for yourself, where she thought cheerleading was like a sport for people playing sports. And I never really like understood it and stuff, and now it's kind of cool, because then I, you know, now I'm fighting for the world title in the UFC, and maybe yeah, if I was sounds... doing cheerleading, I, you know, it would be would like be totally fighting different. for the world title. In yeah, UFC. yeah. But, and, and you know, you have such a nice positive uh, demeanor, and no one would assume just that you're a, like a UFC fighter and you like, crush people's skulls but what is it like when you're about you have someone right in front of you and you know you could literally send them to the hospital like what's going through your mind uh it's amazing i mean <laughs> people always say they're like i can't believe you're a fighter and i'm like the least confrontational person but just kind of knowing like sometimes i think if i'm like in a public situation where someone's like annoying me or being like a jerk i can be like <laughs> I just say to myself, I'm like, this doesn't bother me because I know I can knock you out right now. <laughs> that is so sweet. So then, like, what are some of the tips and tricks? Like, I love the mindset, like, visualization, mm -hmm. self-talk. What do you do, like, right before you're, you're going into this octagon on February 8th? Like, what do you visualize or tell yourself? Um, I just try to you know, compare, my, like, think about my training. If I, I think if you prepare well, then the fight's gonna be easy. I mean, it's never, like, super easy, it's a fight, but, um, you know, I just, I train so hard, and I train with really good people, so I, right before a fight, when I get nervous, I just kind of remind myself that, like, you know, whoever I fight isn't gonna do anything that I haven't seen before. I do this every day, it's just, like, another day. I just try to stay focused and do everything that I worked on, and, it, you know, then it's easy. It's, I'm not gonna be surprised. You're so calm about it. I feel like I'd be like, all right, like, let's, let's go kick some ass, you know? Like, try to be, like, I hope that, I'm really glad that I just did that there. <laughs> um, but, like, do you, get, do you get angry? I definitely don't get angry, and it's funny, because, like, you know, throughout the years when I'm on the UFC cards and you're in the warm-up room, you're in the warm-up room with a couple of the fighters and every fighter is completely different. You know, I like play, I play some music and I, I do my workout and you know, I get an intense workout, right. but there's some guys that are like full on fighting in the back. Yeah. I'm like, I looked over my last fight, there was these two, this guy was fighting and he had his training partner there and he was just like, 
full on fighting his training partner. And I felt so bad for his training partner. He was just taking it. He, he sat down on the bench. He was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And I, meanwhile, I'm like, what is going on? Like, aren't you going to get tired? And then yeah. some people just are like laying there sleeping, mm. you know? But for the most part, I'm, I'm pretty calm. I don't think of it as like, oh my gosh, a fight. This person, is, <laughs> I'm going to war. That's what everyone says. Like, I'm going to war. I'm like, I mean, we're just fighting. It's a sport. Wow. Like, I like, yeah. very like composed. Like, yeah. Not too high, not too low. Um, uh, we have to go soon, but like, what is the biggest misconception you would say people have about UFC fighters? Um, I think for UFC right, that they're just, you know, that they're fighters, like in the street, they want to fight everyone, they're <laughs> angry, they're, you know, they're just really brawlic type people. And, you know, that's not the case. I think most of us fighters, we fight in the cage, so we don't want to do anything that has to do with that outside of the gym. Right. Want some white claw? Yeah. Perhaps, yes. Right? Exactly. You know? <laughs> no laws when you're drinking claws. Uh, sponsorship potential, maybe. Let's see. Yeah. Now, thank you so much, Caitlin, for taking us through everything. Um, after that, I'm ready to enter the octagon. I think. And after the break, we will do just that. Stay tuned to find out who Caitlin wants to fight, marry, or kill. Hi, I'm Tom Bergeron, and I had to call it a night. <sighs> hey guys, welcome on back. I'm JSB alongside UFC fighter Caitlin Chukagian, and we want to know what goes on inside the mind of a fighter. Who do they love? Who do they hate? Who do they want to send to the hospital? And for that, we're gonna play a little game of Fight, Marry, Kill. Wow, what a delightful graphic. You may have seen this game before, but in this version, we're gonna present Caitlin with three choices on a particular topic and find out which one she would like to fight, whose ass she wants to kick, Marry who she loves and kill who do you want to be stricken from the earth? First up, Caitlin. NFL teams, New York Giants, Philadelphia Eagles, Washington <laughs> Who do you want to fight, marry, or kill? Okay, um, marry Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. Of course. Um, I guess fight, uh, Fight New York. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I feel like you know most like Sunday nights when I go out for football, it's, I kind of do that anyway. Okay. Yeah. That. <laughs> and kill. R I don't really. Yeah. Care. Let's just get. Yeah. Let's no just one get, cares. Get rid of them. No one likes that franchise, and you could really beat up on the Giants yes. quite well. It'd be like a really good easy fight. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we've got who would you like to fight, marry, and kill of Joe Rogan, Ronda Rousey, and Chris Cyborg. <laughs> um, okay, I guess um, fight Rhonda. I think okay. that would be, you know, there's potential to make money, and I think that would be pretty easy. Yeah, you could just yeah, like, could, I think that would be her down in a fight. couple seconds. Yeah, um, kill Cyborg. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't need to be in the same house with her all the oh, time. Oh, spice. And and definitely football. marry Joe Rogan. I'm a huge Joe Rogan fan. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, watch out, Chris Cyborg. <laughs> You're gonna be killed. Um, okay, next up we have Michael B. Jordan, Sylvester Stallone, and Will Smith. All actors in fighting movies. Okay. Um, I guess fight Michael B. Jordan. Ooh, that's, One's that's, I feel like that's tough. That's tough. Yeah, I, don't, I feel like it's an easy fight. He's like Whoa, a pretty boy. Okay. He's a pretty boy. He is. Um, Mary Sylvester Stallone. Oh. Yeah. Daddy is. No. <laughs> And then, or, Phil, or Philadelphia connection, yes. Yeah, and then uh, kill. Will kill Smith. Will Smith. I know. I don't really wow. like one, if I have to pick. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he doesn't really. Yeah. Doesn't really do anything. For yeah, he's, he's there. Just there. Like, yeah. All right. Well, we wouldn't notice. Okay. Um, moving on, we've got. Who would you like to fight, Mary Kill of French Bulldog, <laughs> a French press, or French fries? <laughs> Okay. This is a real tough one. All right, I, I have a French bulldog. I'm obsessed with them. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get another one. I almost got another one last week, but we figured let's wait till after the okay. fight. Yeah. But uh, Mary French bulldog. I don't know if you're allowed to do that, but <laughs> um, <laughs> fight 
French press. It's a little too much work for me, so I, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll do that and then kill French fries. No! I, I, yeah, I mean, I could, if it's coffee or French fries, I, I think any coffee. Yeah. Yeah. You can't eat fries if you Yeah, I'm cutting weight. Eat. I'm used to not having them anyway, yeah, so. Yeah. Unlike our show, who just eats French fries all the time. That's why we're not competing for a title. Okay, moving on. Next one, we've got who do you want to fight, Mary kill with people with AirPods, people with Pelotons, and people who only shop at Whole Foods. Okay. Um, I want to make fun of people with the uh, AirPods, but that's me. So I guess Mary AirPods, because I'm unfortunately, that's me right now. Oh. Um, well, I love AirPods, but we got a bad scoop, I think. We heard that you weren't a fan of AirPods. Well, I oh. don't know. You've changed I, your tune. I've changed my mind once I used them, and I realized how convenient they are. They're yeah. So good. I was a hater, and now, now I'm on board. Yeah. <laughs> um, kill Peloton, I guess. Yeah. Because I'm just sick of everyone posting, like, videos of the Peloton. We get yeah, it. It's we just, get it. You did a 10 minute bike ride. Yeah, it's just a bike. Right? Yeah. Like, you're yeah. out there, like, crushing skulls. You're yeah. like, okay, you went for a 30 minute bike ride. Whoop de doo. Yeah, we get it. Yeah. And then I guess fight Whole Foods shoppers. I mean, I shop there, but I feel like you need to fight when you go in. Yeah, you there. do. You do. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. in New York, the lines are insane. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you do well, right? You'd yeah. be able to, you know, you get that croissant or yeah. that, like olive oil or yeah. like, like, I don't know what people shop for. I don't grocery shop. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. That was Fight, Mary, Kill. What? That was great. That was awesome. Okay. We are not ready to call it night just yet. Stay tuned to see if Caitlin and I will fight, marry, or kill each other. <laughs> What's going to happen next? <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave Hill, and I had to call it a night. I don't know why I pointed. <laughs>Cruising along here on Call It A Night, but before we do just that, make sure you follow us for exclusive content like more knockouts with Caitlin at Fubo Sports on Twitter, and you can also find full episodes of all Fubo Sports Network shows for a limited time only if you subscribe to our Fubo Sports YouTube channel. And of course, don't forget you can stream us free 24/7 at FuboSportsNetwork.com. Caitlin, thank you so much for coming in here, talking to us about the ins and outs of UFC and getting ready for your flyweight title fight against Valentina Shevchenko. UFC 247, February 8th. Tune in. We're Team Caitlin, obviously. Um, just a little insight. What kind of fighter do you think I'd be like? Um, I think you'd be a very entertaining fighter. Um, I feel like you would have a, a good mix of ground and, and striking. Oh, ah, okay. Yeah, I feel like you might be a fan of like the overhand. Okay, yeah. yeah like kind of like the wild punches. Wild punches, yeah, just yeah. freaking fl yeah. flailing everywhere yeah. like that. Okay, and then one, uh, you, I told you I play hockey. What do you think would be something I could bring to the rink? Like, like if you were coaching me? Um, I think you could bring in like maybe some knees clinch work, like knees. where you grab them and in and, and tight, and you because I feel like you could sneak a knee in without okay. people seeing. Because so I feel like put hockey, my stick kind of like under my arm and just just grab, throw the stick yeah, and just throw, grab throw a knee. The, yeah, they won't expect that. With the stick, that. Uh, throw it and then get the helmet and just crush it into my my knees. Yeah, right? I feel like okay. they won't expect that. They definitely will yeah. expect that. And then I will be taken out of the league for the rest of my life. But I will be a badass, just like Caitlin. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us here today. Make sure you watch her fight February 8th, Houston, UFC 247. And uh, you got to fight for your right to party, folks. And that means Friday at 8 p.m., we've got a fresh order of Drinks with Binks, where we sit down with Zab Judah and Mita Leacock from Boxer Wives. A big fighting show we got here today, folks. But until then, and whoever you may call your night, make sure it's a good one. <laughs>